kind of dreary here. It's beautiful right now, but it's supposed to get a little ugly later. Yeah, no, let them know. Because one person over here. <laughs> You're live. You're live and ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so to be clear, I'm sitting at the McCall Curie room by myself. Um, and the other four members of the select board are on Zoom. So I'm calling the select board meeting to order at eight o'clock on August the 26th, 2022. So happy Friday, everyone. Okay, Mr. Purple is going to be right back. He had to go get someone to be quiet downstairs. Okay, um, we've got one agenda item today. We're going to start with public comment first. Does anyone have a public at all? There's one person, but nobody has their hand raised. Okay. All right, so no public comment. So we're going to go right into our one agenda item. So I want to provide some background on this morning's agenda item. Um, an article was included on the 2017 annual town meeting warrant to consider selling Fayetteville Hall. It was the second time that the sale had been brought forth. It was also brought forth in 2016 and failed to pass. The article did pass in 2017 by the requisite two thirds vote because it was real estate. A proposed amendment to require that a preservation restriction be put on the building as a condition of sale did not pass. The Board of Selectmen at that time asked town meeting not to tie their hands because we all knew selling the building was going to be difficult as, as it was. It was in poor condition at the time of the vote and the town had no use for it nor did it want to spend the significant sum of money it would take to properly rehab the building. It was also clear that town meeting did not want the building to be demolished. The town only received one bid for Fable Hall <clears throat> during the initial bid process. That purchase price was $5,000. The Board of Selectmen at the time rejected that bid and put the property back out to bid. A company owned by John Daly Priscoli bid on the property and was able to negotiate a PS with the Board of Selectmen at that time. The PNS was signed on February 13th, 2019 for a purchase price of $21,000. The sale closed on October 22nd, 2019. The PNS included a writer. They gave Southboro a right of first refusal. Um, the buyer also granted Southboro a permanent easement for 12 parking places in the adjacent parking lot to be used for Fable Park parking, which was properly recorded. So now I want to read the actual writer addendum that talks about the writer first refusal. It's short. Um, buyer agrees to grant to seller right of first refusal to reacquire the subject property at an agreed upon sale price, which reflects the fair market value at the time the right of first refusal is exercised. If buyer does not have a purchase agreement from a third party, which sets the fair market value of the property, which is our case, and I added that piece of it. Then both buyer and seller will obtain a contemporary appraisal. And if they cannot agree to a sales price, then the parties can elect to either obtain a third appraisal to set a purchase price or seek mediation of the sales price. This provision shall survive closing, which is why we're here today, because it did survive closing. So short and sweet, it's not a typical right of first refusal as far as how the documents are done, but it is what it is. So that's why we're here this morning is to basically deal with that right of first refusal that the town has on Fable Hall. Okay, um, so here we are. The select board has received a letter from Mr. Priscoli requesting that select board wait its right of first refusal to allow Mr. Priscoli to execute a bargain purchase sale with the Southport Historical Society for $100. In essence, Mr. Priscoli is donating the property. The Southport Historical Society has announced plans to rehab Fable Hall to its original state and put a preservation restriction on it. You can read about their plans on their website. The agreement between the Southport Historical Society and Mr. Scrolley states that if the select board does not agree to waive its right of first refusal, then the deal between the two will be null and void. We are here this morning to discuss whether the select board would like to exercise its right of first refusal. Um, 
Since I'm the only one sitting here, I'm going to start the discussion, then I'll turn to the four other members of on Zoom and call them as I see them. So um, I will vote to release the right of first refusal. I do not recommend that the town repurchase Fable Hall. Town meeting overwhelmingly voted to dispose of the property in 2017. We have several possible very large building projects currently being contemplated and also very expensive projects being contemplated. And I don't want to add another for which we have no current use. Additionally, if we were to vote to exercise our row for it, it will be nothing more than a pure victory. Mr. Piscoli will withdraw his offer per the agreement with the South Fork Historical Society. Um, additionally, if he were to withdraw the offer, he may decide to execute the transaction in another form for which we have no interest, such as a long-term lease. Um, I also think it's the right thing to do. The plans announced by the uh, South Fork Historical Society for the rehab of the building are very consistent with the majority of you at town meeting. Okay, um, Lisa. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I have a, a couple comments and a couple questions. Um, uh, first off, um, on right of first refusals in the past, I know most of them have been on 61A properties, but this is still a interest in real estate. Um, the town has done a due diligence of reaching out to boards and committees and seeing if there's any interest um, before the board makes a decision. So I don't think honestly that doing that is going to potentially change what the decision before us today, but from a process standpoint, um, I would like to take the time to do that so we're consistent in what has been done in the past. That was the process that was used for the Deerfoot property, um, specifically since I sat on the board anyway, um, and so that that's part one that I think we should follow the consistency in that. Um, two is I think uh, I have a few points that I think for me anyway, uh, before I sign off that I, I would like to see done. I would like to have the right of first refusal be a condition of the town releasing its right. I think we need to have another right of first refusal on there. I think that um, I would like to see language that the preservation restriction is a condition of this as well. I mean, that was when this was originally sold for $21,000. It was at the will of town meeting with wanting to see it preserved. Not that I don't think the society will do that, but I think um, having it in writing and part of a condition for my release um, the third piece is, I guess, the easements to some level are taken care of. Um, so I guess those are my, my three pieces. And, and I wish Jay was here. Unfortunately, I couldn't reach out to him because um, I don't I'm not exactly sure. Mr. Purple, do you know how long we have for the right of first refusal? Is it 30 days? Is it 90 days? So the language, um, the language in the in the PNS is very broad. It's not specific. It has no detail. Um, I, I believe that the process, and I could be wrong, but I believe the process is normally 30 days on order first refusal. But um, I, I don't think there are any limitations because there are none that, that are none that are listed. There's no process that's listed in the PNS. So that would be a question for for council. I mean, I, I think we can get it done within the 30 day window. Um, and lastly, um, I will leave that. I know um, the society has said that, you know, they want work to start over Labor Day. The only permit that's pulled at this point is the demolition permit for interior work. So um, again, I think I'd like to see us do our due diligence. I'm not ready to vote on this today. Um, and I would like to see, like I said, a preservation restriction be a condition the right of first refusal be another condition. Again, it's a, it's a valuable piece of property, take away the historic piece to it. And it was sold for $21,000. So I think the, the town has a, is vested in um, making sure that hopefully that will continue to be preserved and it will continue to be um, a great asset for all the, all the residents of the town. So um, I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Same. Excuse me, Kathy, did you say me? Yes, yeah, sorry, Sam. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, Lisa, um, good points. Um, I guess I feel that the town has already basically done due diligence on this and that uh, we looked at the facility's needs previously. I think town meeting spoke uh, very clearly on it. I think that uh, also uh, town meeting and a variety of other inputs from things like the master planning processes have reinforced the historical value of the property to the town, which I think is an important one. And um, I think this is actually an interesting example of what I would consider to be a public private partnership opportunity where we're using external funding to actually produce something of value to the town that uh, otherwise we wouldn't be able to afford or wouldn't likely be able to afford. Um, and I guess I have um, confidence that uh, the process will proceed um, as proposed here without, uh, uh, again, either due diligence or um, uh, additional conditions uh, on the process. So I'm in favor of, of granting the request at this point. Thank you. Andrew. Uh, my, my position is pretty much the same as Lisa's on this. Um, I think of the town's two, you know, key interests here are in the, um, the parking and the easement on the adjacent parcel. And then also just doing um, the best we can to ensure that the property is indeed preserved, historically preserved indefinitely. And um, I, ha I haven't yet seen copies of what the society's plans are for those. I'd be interested in seeing them. I, again, I agree with Lisa. This is something I think we'll, we'll probably be able to work out, but um, not prepared to vote for this at this time because it's a significant matter. And, um, I don't feel that I have done enough due diligence into it. And another thing that just struck me as odd is that the, you know, the offer that triggers the right of first refusal is labeled as a draft agreement rather than an agreement. And that's just kind of odd. I'd be interested in getting the views on um, from Jay about that. What if any impact that has on us um, and you know, just one observation here. If you look, it's, it was interesting to read the addendum to the PNS because, you know, there were some representations about plans that were going to be undertaken in 2019 and they didn't happen, including like paragraph two says that the parties agree that the proposed renovation of the village hall does not commence prior to January 15. 2021 and the town shall have the right to repurchase the two parcels and the buildings for the original purchase price stated therein and i don't think that that has happened so i would be interested in getting more information about the exact plans and trying to work to ensure that there is as much protection for historical preservation as possible i agree i think lisa made a very good point about you know, continuing to have a right of first refusal that, that probably would be have some more detail than the one that is in the current PNS. And um, really just kind of a process timing issue. I think we could, you know, we're going to have some upcoming meetings in the next two weeks. And I don't see the harm in, um, you know, discussing it at its next regularly scheduled meeting where there'd be more opportunity for public comments. That's what I, that, thanks. Yes. Chelsea, we can't see you, but it looks like you're here. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm traveling, so I'm not in a spot to go on video. Um, thank you. Um, I am not opposed to, um, Kathy, what, a lot of the things that you said, I think for me, it's just going through the right process. Um, and if that's a 30 day window, then I think that's a reasonable amount of time for um, us to do what Andrew and um, Lisa have suggested. Um, one further point um, that I had in terms of the parking is in the um, quick claim deed, it referenced that the parking spots would be clearly labeled with signage. Um, and I don't think that there are signs um, for those parking spots today. So I think um, that's not completely clear to the public, um, especially people who are coming from out of town and using Fayetteville Playground. Um, so that for me is um, my biggest 
um, concern is making sure that that's clear that that is um, going to continue to be used for um, town residents and the public visiting um, the playground there. So um, I think we need to tighten up that language and I'm, I'm not, sh I, I did try to reach out to Jay. I haven't heard back from him yet. Um, so I just think we need some more time to make sure we do our due diligence here. Thank you. So um, it looks like three out of five are not ready to vote on this today. So that is going to be the result of that. Um, but a couple more um, comments that may add a little color here. Um, so as far as more time, we received a letter on August 19th. Right, so that's a week from today, or a week ago today, so seven days of it. Um, Andrew, I'll direct this one to you as the um, sitting attorney on our board. Um, I talked to, when I first saw it, um, you know, I've seen a lot of ropers and I've never seen anything quite so uh, brief um, and possibly poorly written as far as details go. So you're left to, to basically fill in the blanks. Um, but I would say that what Mark said a few minutes ago, um, that 30 days is a fairly typical rover to basically give someone a time to respond to a deal with some people. Um, so I'm happy with the process that Lisa outlined, um, but I would tell you, I think our 30 day clock, we already got seven days into it. So maybe um, we need to make sure that we are going to deal with this within the next three weeks. In the meantime, I'm also going to make sure that um, Mr. Washington has seen the email from Karina Quinn that she sent to, she sent it to Mark, she sent it to me, and I think she copied Mr. Washington on the front. She does. Okay, so, so you see it then, as far as what needs to be done as far as planning board goes, so they can start getting that teed up too. So there's probably plenty for them to do um, in the interim, but I do think we owe it to Mr. Um, Scully to um, get an answer and vote on this one way or the other. ASAP. So does everyone agree that within three weeks we're going to put this back on the agenda and whatever due diligence anyone wants to do, um, they'll have the three weeks to do it? Is yes. That Kathy, can I just ask a question? Can, yeah. can you forward a copy of that email that Karina sent? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. And then also just to follow up that we will send a note today to board the boards and committees and ask if anyone has an interest in this and give them a, a one week notice mark that you need to hear back within one week. I, I'm assuming we all know the answer to that already, but I think it was, it's was it been part of the process in the past and we should certainly follow it. So if we could have Melanie send something out today, Mark on that. Sure. that yep. no, thank you. Okay. Do, you want, do you want that just to departments or boards and committees or the whole universe? In the I past, it's been departments and boards and committees. To all boards and committees. Yeah, you know, because like for specifically for Deerfoot, and again, that's the one that I had sat for, open space, conservation, none of them had an issue. I would imagine if, you know, if you were asking me specifics, I would think uh, recreation, you know, based on the parking, uh, historical clearly. And again, I know what historical is gonna say anyway, but again, it's, it's, it's a matter of just following the process. And, and Kathy, I think when we end up here in a couple of weeks, I don't know that the decision that could we have taken it today would have changed. I will just say that, but at least we'll have done what I, I personally felt was, was comfortable to move this along. Um, I appreciate that, Lisa, so I agree. Um, a couple more things too that I think are relevant. Um, I read the language on purpose because I want everybody to understand that it says clearly that if we don't have a fair market value deal, which we clearly don't, $100 is not fair market value, then we have to go out and get an appraisal to determine what that is as far as what we would have to pay. To Andrew's point, as far as the other paragraph that talks about he's got to start work within um, um, so much time, um, I don't know, you know, again, that's not really fleshed out what work means. He has demos inside of the building. Um, so he has to work. Again, I don't know if it rises to the level of what that contemplated because it's so subjective. So there's lots of, um, and certainly, as far as what was written in the, the uh, identity. Can I make one uh, comment? That's... Go ahead. Okay. Just, just to echo something that Chelsea said, why it may be more from the parents of young children perspective to focus on the parking issue and the playground is that it's very typical that on a nice day, like in the spring or the fall, a lot of people will go to the playground at... Um, uh, the Fayville field 
and the parking lines up on the um, west side of the street. There's not a place to park. So you park in that parking lot, it's unpaved and it's not very well maintained at all. There's often been these huge like sinkholes with lots of water in them. So, um, you know, we would like, if the society is going to acquire that land and they, it would be subject to an easement uh, in favor of parking. I mean, we'd also like some more better maintained parking and well-marked parking. Um, it, you'll, it often actually is kind of an issue. It's just not, um, sometimes not safe. And that's an example of where I think, um, you know, getting the input from the uh, Recreation Commission can help us make a, you know, good decision. And I mean, I'm sure that the new buyer would have an interest in working with us is just to have better maintenance of that parking lot to help um, the people who are using the playground across the street. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, just for clarification, I think one of the issues and one of the reasons why um, um, that was given, I think, but it's closing the building is because the septic system needs to be replaced. And obviously the septic system is going to, because there's no room with the building parcel, septic is going to have to go into the parking lot. So before any of that, before any paving or regrading or anything is done, um, and then have to be dug up to do that work. I think it's that work and then and then the parking lot can be addressed and put into a more permanent condition. Okay, thanks. Andrew, one more thing that you brought up, I just wanted to make sure that um, it's clear what you meant. Um, so the easements that they were, you know, the, the PNS rider was not recorded. The easements obviously are. So they're there, they're perpetual, so they're, it sounded like you were maybe doubtful that they would carry over to the new buyer. Um, it, it's so, in the quick claim deed. Yes, yeah. So okay. the, the, the offer or the draft, draft agreement says that um, Mr. Deli Prescoli is agent of Fayville Hall LLC. He agrees to convey all interest and title to the properties um to the society so he doesn't have the extent of it, his interest is he has title to the property subject to um uh the easement this parking easement um again here's another opportunity where the the just these have really long-term benefits just having some more detail about that that easement, right? The easement is just, it's, it's two sentences in there. And there's also the deed does say that, um, this is actually kind of a significant issue is that um, the town conveyed to Fayville Hall subject to the requirement that Fayville Hall maintain and preserve the exterior of Fayville Village Hall structure to substantially preserve same pursuant to its agreement with the historical, with the South Park Historical Commission. I would like to see a copy of that agreement and then that that sounds like it's kind of mimicking a um preservation restriction but there need to be the the owner of the property can't hold the preservation there'd be need to be another party and there have been you know we have um for the for the library facade and then for the um burnett property we have preservation restrictions in place where i believe at least for the the South Borough Historical Commission is the holder of the uh, preservation restriction. Is that correct? No. What about for the, okay. So, yeah. All right. But there needs to be another party that holds it, right? So that's another thing where, you know, we put our heads together and we can work out um, details that really protect everyone's interests and make sure there's, you know, the type of private public private partnership that Sam is talking about. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Lisa? Aye. Sam? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Kelsey? Aye. 
and cook his eyes. So, vice versa. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks.